All right, here How's we go. How's the competition at left guard looking right now? Left guard is looking good. And, you know, the guys are working hard. They're, uh, they're competing every day. We're grading them every day. And, uh, and it's been a rotation a little bit, but it's, it's going well. Marcus Tatum have his strength levels up to where you feel like you could depend on him to start right now? He's done a great job in the weight room. Uh, all, our, all our guys are, are where they need to be from the weight room. they got to continue that and maintain that as we go throughout the camp and season. But they've done a nice job with it. Tayshawn snap accuracy at this point? It, it's going well. It's going well, especially for a guy that's never really done it a lot. He's doing a good job with that. Coach, how are you juggling things? I know you've got some nicks and bruises that you're managing. Who's, who's moving in different spots or how you, how you handle all we're that? Just, we're just plug and play right now. There's, uh, there's some guys that will start off where, you know, the day at practice where they're at, and then we just kind of move everybody around. Luckily, Coleman, Jack, and a, a variety of guys have played different positions. You know, the one that's probably uh, done, done a lot of it is uh, Devontae Brooks. He's played three different spots right now. Coach, how do you not let that bother you? The fact that you're obviously – I mean, it's part of the game, I know, right. but how do you not – maybe get caught up so suddenly you went from having all the competition okay. everywhere to you don't really have it right now. well we're all we're going to get it back it's just a matter of time it's just and it's going to be a short matter of time so um, you, you can't worry about it coach the ones that are out here help the ones that aren't and then you move on you talked a lot about in, intensity and being more physical what would you rate this group in terms of where they are well, I think they're working hard and they're getting to where they need to be. It's just a total package of having the having the extra bodies, to, you know, so you're not out here for two hours. I mean, the game's not going to be like practice. We all know that. And our, the way we practice is going to be even a higher tempo. So we just got to continue to to keep pushing that mentality. And, and we'll see where it's at when we get to game time. In a perfect world injury, when would you like to have a, a, a five in place that you feel good about rolling with? I would say as we get ready to go into game week after the final scrimmage. You know, we should know, give everybody a chance to compete all the way to the end. And then as we settle in, getting into game week on that Monday, we should know where we're at. Coach, do you find it kind of feel, I mean, that, that's sort of late, but you feel comfortable because you've got so many experienced guys that you can push it, push the deadline out there? Well, no time. question. And you see how it is. I mean, you know, things happen, especially up front. You know, we got to do a great job of staying off the ground and making sure we don't get hurt anymore. But things happen. So we got to be able to, to, to work with each other, communicate with each other. And that's the biggest thing that goes on is the communication peak piece of it. Is Coleman Thomas getting any reps anywhere other than center? Uh, he had, well, he's got a little bit here the last couple of days at tackle, but it's really just, you know, because of our, our uh, needs right there right now, and uh, he, he'll be a center. Well, obviously, I know you want to settle on a starting five, but once you get to the season, are you wanting to rotate guys within games if that's if that's a, a Oh, sure, sure. If, if the guys are, you know, if they're all got guys are competing, you know, we can only throw five out there at the first, all right? But, but if they're competing and they're right there with each other, then we'll roll with it. If things are running, then we're going to be running with them. But uh, no, no question, there'll be more than five that just play. But we'd like to get in there and get five together and have them start working in unison together. But competition creates that, and if everybody's close, then other guys will play. When you get everybody back, how deep do you think this offensive line is of guys that can play right now? I think, I think it's, uh, I think we've got seven to nine guys that can play. And, and seven or nine that, that probably have. Now, so, you know, there's some other guys that haven't, but we've got to get them ready to go and, and get them in the position to do that. That's why you were a quality control assistant here last year. What was your routine kind of like doing that last year? What made you decide to take that role? Well, I mean, uh, the routine was basically I was helping uh, coach the board with the game planning, uh, helping uh, Don with the with the ins and outs of the offensive line behind the scenes, just doing any kind of game planning that we could do, uh, kind of mentoring the guys off the field, you know, not so much in football, just in everything that they got to go through to be a, a, a good football player at this level. Uh, there's no question when coach asked me to be the offensive line coach to get back on the field, you know, it was awesome. So I had to take that opportunity. But to take the quality, so to take the quality control role last year. Oh, to take that. It's just, players. you know, I, I knew Zach Azani, worked with him, uh, worked with Nick Sheridan at uh, both at Western Kentucky and Nick at South Florida and just had a good relationship with them and they talked positively about being here and I thought it was a good move for me. Did, did so like it's a lot of film work, or was it work in the meeting rooms, or what? Were we no, no, I couldn't meet with the players. It was it was just all in the in the uh, film room, just breaking down opponents and doing studies and sack studies and pressure studies and different things like that. Has anything changed for the offensive line with with Larry's offense in terms of how you do things or terminology? No, we try to keep the terminology the same as far as the calls. Uh, to be quite honest with you, most calls are universal. Uh, we changed some of them uh, because of the, uh, you know the the people that have left the staff and things like that. You know, we don't want people to know what's going on. 
but it's it, there was an easy fit that just changed the name and the, and the block means the same. I've heard a lot about the freshman tight end. How is he as a blocker, though? Can he handle those? Have you gotten to see much of that yet? He, we hadn't seen a ton of it yet, but we've seen some of it, and he, he's doing a great job, and he'll continue to get better. Coach, speaking of freshmen, obviously, you know, Trey came in with a ton of height, but what about K-Ron? He's, what have you seen from him? Well, so K-Ron's a big, athletic, strong kid who's never played a lot of football, and uh, he's learning every day. And the thing that really – Surprised me with him is how quickly he's learning. He's doing a nice job with that. Got to continue to push him. He hadn't seen a lot of different things from our defense yet, but he's starting to see that, and his head's exploding a little bit. But we'll get him reined in and get him going. Well, what did you guys like about move, moving Trey inside the guard? I mean, he did some t left tackle, right tackle, and ended spring at guard. Yeah. What did you guys like about him? Well, inside? you know, the one thing you like about Trey inside is his power. He's got he's got great power. He's one of our stronger offensive linemen that we have. Obviously, he's physically gifted, and and so inside. Uh, there's there's a little less think, thought process with the protection part of it. Is, is he only working at guard, or has he done any tackles? He's done ta you know he's worked tackle this summer, and he's worked guard also, so he's worked both. What have you? I know you worked a lot with Drew last year. Uh, what have you kind of seen him from the summer after the spring to, to now? Well, I think Drew's continuing in the maturation project process that he did last year. You know, he's just getting better and better. He's getting more comfortable at the position. Good thing for Drew is he stayed at one spot and he's just kept it there. So he he's starting to understand the inner things that he's got to do to be more successful. Do you feel like the run blocking is ahead of pass pro or vice versa? I think we're even. I think I mean, you know, they win some, we win some, and uh, and so that's a good thing. That's that. Uh, hopefully, that translates to a good football team. This line had quite a bit of shuffling last year. Quite had to deal with quite a bit of injuries. Do you feel y'all are particularly well equipped to deal with? All the, that kind yeah. of stuff when it happens. the mentality part of it is you, it's next man up. You just got to go. I mean, you, no, you know, the defenses in the SEC don't care. They're unforgiving. And so you just got to go out there and you got to be ready to go and you got to be ready to play. How much better off is Brett Kendrick this year than, than where he finished last year? I know he had the ankle at the end of last year. He's doing better. He's doing better. He's understanding things more. You know, he's doing a great job of leading in our room and he's he's come back healthy. I know One more. The, uh, message for, from you was to kind of build a bully. But, uh, where are you at in that transformation? That's a, it's an ongoing process, but I'll tell you what, I love the guys in our room. They're good men, and, and they're coming out and working every day, and I'm proud of them for that.